okay and uh, i think you know we're having some uh, good discussion um uh, going on uh, and also i'm trying to be a little faster because we have the whole uh, book to cover uh, and there are uh, wonderful insights uh, and so many relevant questions to be answered um, so you know i'm just trying to see how we can cover everything but at the same time uh, have questions answered so if you feel the pace is too fast please let me know i can slow down a bit uh, but if it's okay then we will continue in a way in this way i'll just share some key thoughts and then keep moving on to uh, the next section okay uh, and if you have questions then you can always you know stop me in between uh, raise your hand or post the the questions on the chat we can discuss it and then keep moving forward so we're talking about uh you know aspects that make the local church strong um and just now we looked at the fact that we must be relevant okay so if we are aloof uh then the church is not making an impact on the lives of the people in the city and the nation so here's the next important uh, thing that makes a local church strong uh, and that is raising up leaders Okay. so uh this this cannot be uh you know it, this cannot be neglected at all because leaders make leaders are the pillars in the house of god so when we have uh several pillars what 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 is the uh, uh you know the benefit from that the building will be strong you have enough pillars to hold hold up the building uh, for the long run so in the same way for a local church we need lots of leaders good leaders strong leaders so this is not just a senior pastor or you know one or two people in the pastoral team and making up the the leaders in the church but along with the pastoral team if you have a lot of other leaders you know ministry leaders cell group leaders uh, basically we are grooming lots and lots of leaders the church will be a strong place now of course it's not easy to um, nurture leaders to help them grow again we are only facilitating because ultimately growth is every individual's responsibility but we can facilitate that growth uh, and hopefully if the individuals uh, you know grow well in the lord then uh, uh, you you have you know quite a few leaders that uh, are um, mm, uh, sort of upholding the church but if the leaders don't grow or somewhere uh, along the journey they decide to leave for whatever reason maybe god has a different calling on their lives it is it's fine it's fine you know the 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 main leadership as such the the senior pastor and and you know the other pastors their task is to continually look out for people who can be groomed into leadership now if these people uh, uh quit uh, meaning they don't want to grow anymore that is unfortunate but if they choose to continue to grow in a different setting where god is leading them it's still beneficial for the kingdom of god now they may not be serving in our local body but that's okay they are a part of another local church and they are contributing to the life of that church and ultimately the kingdom of god is growing so uh, we must uh, constantly look out for for potential leaders and invest in the growth and the uh, maturing of those leaders so strong leaders are very necessary for a strong local church now the next uh, aspect here is the continuity of the local church now uh, when paul instructed timothy uh, he did tell timothy that uh, the ministry should be entrusted or committed to faithful men who will also be able to teach others so what was paul telling him so paul was saying that it's good that timothy is um, serving uh, you know to to mature the church but at the same time he must think of the future no uh, when 
Timothy is maybe old or he has to move on to new territory where God may be calling him. Who is going to run the the church now who is going to uh, take on the position of leadership so it's important for a strong local church to establish that continuity now how can we do this in a practical way there are some insights here which pastor shares so he talks about how he looks out for people who are even um you know uh 20 years younger than him 25 years younger than him 30 years younger than him right so you look out for people uh quite early and when you when you find that you know god puts a certain people on on our hearts who may be much younger than us we can identify we can also begin the nurturing process right because we we uh uh, are aware that God has a calling, God has a purpose for this individual, and maybe you know God is uh, uh, impressing it on our hearts and saying, okay, they might uh, take over leadership in a certain area. So you start grooming them much early. Okay, so uh, any any pastor, any senior leader uh, should be investing in the lives of people who are much much younger than him or her. OK, so for example, I've heard this said uh, uh, often that uh, children's church is not the church of tomorrow. Children's church is the church of today. So sometimes what happens as leaders, as pastors, we just get caught up in doing Sunday services. We get caught up in managing the adult church and we don't think that, hey, those teenagers who are watching us, those kids who are part of the children's church, they are the ones who are actually being groomed. Like, how much of the work of the word and the work of the spirit is affecting them today okay that they can one day step into the the grace the gifting the calling of god upon their lives so for a senior leader it's very important and it it is also good to be intentional about identifying people who are much younger than the leader and then begin to invest in their lives um you know and it might take years and years of time Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, so I mean, I'm just thinking about myself also. I think uh, it was uh, when was this? I don't even remember. It, it was several years ago uh, that uh, one day Pastor just asked, like, Hey, can you preach? Okay, and for me personally, like, I had no clue that I can preach, I was running a live group. And uh, just to prepare the messages for the life group and share it, it was such a stressful activity. Like if life group is on Wednesday, by Tuesday, I, I'll, you know, have a mental breakdown. So that's what was going on. Uh, but, you know, uh, even I didn't recognize that, okay, I can understand God's word or I can share God's word. Not at all. But um, uh, anyway, long story short, I, I guess, you know the the leadership they kind of understood the grace so the opportunity uh, started early on and you know several opportunities several opportunities uh, and, and just as i'm journeying through right i recognize oh man i would have never imagined i would have never imagined that you know this is an area where i could uh, contribute in the kingdom of god but the journey has happened and it's not like a one day journey it's uh, definitely i mean safe to say that you know more than a decade since uh, I, I first preached my first sermon right and uh, so but i'm thankful that you know there were people who have invested uh, and very consistently over time and uh, that's like you know such a blessing um, and you know I, I i'm just sharing from my life and i'm saying that if if that can be done to the younger generation uh you know that that uh, will ensure not just the continuity of a local church but i'm looking at this like from the kingdom perspective also right so uh, we must intentionally look out for those who are younger and uh, invest invest in their lives help them uh, groom them nurture them strengthen them and here is a portion given in our notes from Judges 2, where, um, you know, like uh, Joshua, uh, you know, Joshua walked closely with the Lord. But then uh, they also talk about a generation after the conquest of Joshua and all that that generation that that uh, followed 
Joshua, uh, it is said that they did not know the works of the Lord. I'll read it for us. Judges 2 verse 10. When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord nor the work which he had done for Israel. So there was a gap. One generation experienced, you know, if you want to call it like a revival or the work of God and the power of God and everything. But they they did not invest in the next generation. Okay. So when they were through, we read in Judges that a fresh new generation came on scene who were not equipped, who were not taught the things of God. And that is very dangerous. Okay. Because uh, they wouldn't know where to lead the, the church. They wouldn't know how to uh, extend the kingdom. So it is the responsibility of our generation, right, to be a blessing to the succeeding generations. So actively in a local church, if uh, people, the leadership uh, is able to invest in the lives of those who are younger than us, right, uh, then we can see an entire generation rise up for God. And whatever even Charles was talking, influence the government, influence uh, education, influence the media, influence. You talk about all the seven spheres, seven mountains that uh, can impact society. Every sphere can be affected because we are investing into the next rising generation. But if we fail to do that, you know, they won't know that they have grace. They won't know what gifting is. Well, they won't know what anointing is. They won't know, you know, what they should do. They'll just, you know, do life and uh, um, fail to carry on the legacy that has been handed over to them. So, you know, that's a little bit about uh, strong local churches um, and uh, what are the things that make a local church strong. So once we discuss uh, questions, comments, we will... Uh, move on to the next uh, chapter here. Uh, Kennedy says, uh, is modernity emasculating the gospel in local churches? So again, Kennedy, when we say modern uh, modernity, uh, my mm, the way I would look at this is like, uh, See, as long as we are true to the word of God, true to scripture, um, we are good, right? And and when we are true to the word and we are relevant, that's okay to be modern, okay? But uh, what exactly do you mean by modernity emasculating the gospel? If you could please uh, expand it further, I think that will help us understand. Yeah, Kennedy, uh, go ahead, please. I think most local churches we have to attend to them. They don't have to talk about the natural power. They are more okay. humanism. Eh? Yeah, sorry to interrupt, uh, Kennedy, but can't hear your voice. Okay, I, uh, I think there's an audio issue. All right. Okay, we'll wait for. Very uh, faint, very faint. Very faint again, Kennedy. Sorry. Okay, uh, not to worry. How about you just hold on to the question and then we can come back to it towards the end. Or you could type it in the chat. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, so do I move on to the next chapter here?
Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Let's let's move on to the next chapter. Uh, now, again, the next chapter is a very very interesting one. Uh, it's about church growth principles. Um, I would uh, recommend that you watch. In fact, the church most of the church growth principles here are from. Um, David Yonggi Cho, who is the pastor of uh, Yoido Full Gospel Assembly uh, uh, in um, Seoul, Korea. Uh, and there's also a sermon uh, or a uh, seminar video which is available on YouTube. So if you could listen to that, it's very interesting to hear him, uh, uh, you know, share his own story. Uh, so many of the points that he shares there are also covered here. So church growth principles. Now, uh, God wants us to be fruitful. We've talked about that. Uh, and uh, I, I told us earlier that you know, when we think about the gospel spreading far and wide and many people coming into the kingdom, uh, you know, that should that uh, that is a great thing uh, because that's what Jesus wanted us to do. Right. Like go uh, preach the gospel. And, uh, uh, you know, even to the end of the age, I'm with you, he says. So we we are supposed to take the gospel everywhere, right? Every tribe, every tongue, uh, every nation. We, we see uh, all categories of people in the book of Revelation. So the gospel has to go out. Uh, and therefore, for a leader or a pastor or even, you know, those who are engaged in other forms of ministry in the church, for us to desire the growth of the local church, it's a godly thing. Um, for now some of us might feel that hey if the church grows too big then what about community what about fellowship i'm sure there's there's uh, there are wise ways in which it can still uh, happen the community can happen but because we want strong uh, fellowship you know if you're saying oh no let the church be small i think we will be going against the a very mandate that god has given us we are called to impact hundreds and thousands of people so for us to desire church growth uh, it, it's a good thing okay and uh, many of the nations that we all come from you know we know uh, the population is huge right uh, and so there are so many people waiting to hear the gospel and uh, it, it is our responsibility to take the gospel out now how do we see the growth of the church we will discuss some key things that will help us see um, growth so these are principles for church growth the first one is to have a strong vision and these principles again as i told you they're being shared from uh, what uh, dr david yonggi cho uh, shares in his seminars so he's he talks about having a strong vision for a large growing church okay and he says that the vision uh, must be such that it kind of overtakes you right it, 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 the vision is in your heart you're dreaming about it all the time and you know that that becomes um the fuel that uh, you know uh, is is making you work you're you're fine to work tirelessly because there is a vision in your heart and you're looking at a uh, the the church the kind of church that god wants you to have the numbers that god wants you to have so uh, the vision is very powerful and uh, uh, dr cho he talks about how the language of the holy spirit is dreams and visions okay and the clearer you get the vision from God, the clearer you can uh, communicate that vision and you know people can follow along. So the responsibility of a leader is to have a to get a clear vision from God and the Holy Spirit will minister to us, uh, you know, with the vision, with dreams. Uh, and, you know, we need to learn um, how to receive this communication. And I mean, I'm putting it in a simple way, but uh, it's nice to listen to him talk about it. Okay. And he talks about how God uh, put a vision of a large church uh, in his heart. And when he had something like three or five people in the church, you know, he would preach like he's preaching to thousands of people. And those three people like pastor, like, you know, our eardrums are hurting. Why are you screaming? <laughs> you know, they would say things like that to him. But in his heart, he was overtaken by the vision. And he's like, yeah, I know it's just three of you. But one day there's going to be so many thousands of people in this church. And 
surely so i think it in a matter of three decades the church grew to 800000 people i think that was the number uh, in three de three decades what uh, they saw so you see he he says that he began with a vision so when there were no people there was a vision okay so even if we don't have people if we have a vision we're fine because sooner or later as we are journeying with god uh, you know scriptures say that the write down the vision the vision will surely come okay so the vision is very important because if there is no vision then we don't know what to work towards so for a pastor uh, who is trusting god for church growth a vision of that large church is very very crucial uh, and and we see uh, in scripture that the vision is supposed to um, be very real to us so uh, in in here in your notes there's a statement which says uh, when you embrace the vision the vision will embrace you so every day you're living for the vision okay so that strong vision strong desire to see the vision fulfilled will drive us uh, now this vision will take us forward the vision will also change us we are ready to change in line with that one vision uh, that god has you know to uh, uh, bring the growth in the church so vision is the key thing that will help us uh, and uh, even when things seem dead right the only thing that keeps us going is the vision okay uh, so in in uh, yongijo's experience he talks about the progression like from three people to something like 300 people then 3000 people and then there were a lot of struggles in between times when he thought hey will this really happen but at those times uh, it was the vision that kept him going you know and god is is somebody who uh, speaks and he addresses things that don't exist as though they did Right? And what can make us uh, declare the things that don't exist? A clear vision in our hearts. Because it's like what your natural eyes can't see, your spiritual eyes are seeing that. So the, we have to see that from our spiritual eyes. And when we're able to see that, you know, the soon will come. The growth will come you know, uh, eventually. So the vision is the key thing. Now, moving on, uh, the second important principle for church growth is to have a strong burning desire, okay, strong burning desire. Uh, and he talks about how he worked hard, he prayed hard, right? So there are times when he says that every time God would put a number in his heart, uh, like, okay, at one point, I think God told him, like, you'll have 300 people or something like that. So uh, he just like walks around his church, like he just circles his church, prays, prays, prays. Uh, and, and you know, that strong desire that yes, I know, I know it's going to move from this number to the next number. So, uh, you know, he, he was willing to pray hard. He was willing to um, keep that, that zeal and that burning desire to see the church move to the next level. Right. So uh, it's important because if we don't have a burning desire, if it's just like, you know, if it happens, it happens. If, if it doesn't happen, it's OK. That attitude will not get us anywhere. So uh, especially when it comes to church growth, for somebody who is who has a vision for church growth, I think the desire must kind of um, be very strong that we are moving in this direction and we know that God is going to touch many lives, uh, transform the city through this church, transform the nation through this church. And, you know, you, you keep desiring, praying, working towards that. So first is to have a strong vision. Second is to have a strong burning desire. The third is to engage in continuous prayer and spiritual warfare. The reason uh, for this is that you know, any territory, we've discussed about this, right? Like the the strongholds in that region, the territorial spirits, the spiritual influences have to be broken. Now, we may work very hard, uh, but if the spiritual aspects are not dealt with, then our labor, uh, you, you, we may not see fruit for our labor. So in a seminar, he talks about how the ministry which they did, in Korea, in Korea, they also initiated
Okay, sorry about that class. Uh, there's uh, been a network issue uh, at my end, but that's okay. We will continue from uh, where we stopped. I hope you can hear me. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Avni. All right. So uh, I was saying that, um, so they, they, um, they had a lot of prayer going on in Korea. Uh, so he talks about how when uh, they went out to preach, the response that they received in Korea was uh, incredible. Like a lot of people responded to the gospel message. But apparently, you know, close by, when they went to Japan to do the ministry, uh, they did not have people responding to the gospel. Okay, so uh, his his understanding was that you know the kind of spiritual warfare that went on in korea did not happen in japan and maybe because of that you know the spiritual atmosphere was not set to see the results or the fruit that they were seeing in korea so uh, he uses that example but you know we we have talked about this earlier we have studied about this earlier so engaging in spiritual warfare right and uh, um binding the strong man or the the work of the spirits that control that region you know we we are canceling that we are destroying that through prayer and worship so this is very important for church growth because uh, at the end of the day what are all our natural ex exercises you know they they are meant to bring about spiritual results so we must engage in prayer we must engage in worship uh, and that is very important for uh, church growth. So spiritual warfare and continuous prayer is another key. Maintaining strong faith. Okay. So uh, faith is important uh, because, you know, like any, any other uh, uh, goal or vision that God ha may have given each one of us, even if we are not a pastor, we understand that uh, only with faith, we can keep going on in the journey. The example would be that of uh, Abraham, right? So we know that God gave him a promise, but it was 25 years uh, before he actually had Isaac, right? Uh, and the promise was fulfilled. So 25 years, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of difficulties. I'm sure there must have been times when Abraham thought, you know, is this really going to happen? But you know, faith is the, the evidence of things yet to come so if we have faith we can journey through those seasons that may be challenging and faith is not a feeling you know sometimes we feel like yeah this will happen but there are many times we feel that i don't think this is going to happen but it's not a feeling faith is uh, you know our dependence on god and faith is a choice that we make so we must continue in faith uh, and uh, especially when it comes to church ministry, church planting, church growth, uh, there's a lot of faith involved, right? And uh, that will help us press through the challenges. So maintaining strong faith uh, is also important. Then having a close fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Now, why do we need close fellowship with the Holy Spirit? That is the lifestyle which is recommended for any believer and especially somebody who wants to make this journey of church growth now uh, uh, dr cho he uh, he refers to the holy spirit as the senior partner he says the holy spirit is the senior partner and i am the junior partner so the senior partner gives the instructions and i run with the instructions so it's something like you know you're receiving um that strength you're receiving the guidance um you're receiving the ability right you so basically you're receiving everything with the from the holy spirit and that is driving you forward in um uh, seeing the church growth actually happen so we we must trust the holy spirit for everything that he has to give us and even the the power of god um like in the ministry you know definitely without the power of the holy spirit being released and touching the lives of the people you know that's not ministry at all if people's lives are not touched in that way and it can only happen through the holy spirit so we must learn to um, engage with the holy spirit we must learn to 
communicate with the holy spirit uh, we must you know walk in such a way that you know we are completely dependent on the holy spirit uh, and and you know uh, scriptures say that when we are in christ jesus we become one spirit with him right so that kind of a closeness koinonia uh, or partnership fellowship with the holy spirit is very very important now uh, as part of the deep communion with the holy spirit uh, there is a four step process called incubation and i think for uh, not sure if we have sufficient time to um, look at it in a proper way uh, so uh, i i think i'll pause here any any questions so far on the church growth principles okay all right, so uh, you're getting an idea of uh, what these principles are. So let me let me do this. We have uh, okay. Uh, I was just I was also just going to comment on um, church growth that um, self fellowships, which. Yeah. Um, Dr. Hugicho yeah. really adopted it really goes a long, long way. Mm. And um, in in yeah. having those self fellowships, um, we're reaching out not just mm. to their spiritual needs, but also trying to see how we can mm. meet their physical needs because that that also goes a yes. long way in drawing people and mm. then drawing people to the church, and then also setting mm. up programs that I, 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 I believe mm. strongly that primarily the church is supposed to build people spiritually. But it's also important that mm. the church mm. also finds ways to bridge, to, to form bridges between the society mm. and the church. The church also mm. can be empowered mm. to come up with programs that will make men useful in the society mm. those things are ways mm. of drawing people even people who don't want to hear the gospel it could be a means of getting them into the church and you know by by doing mm. that we can use it as an opportunity and capitalize on those kinds of programs that make men useful in the society you know um to bring the gospel mm. to them and then bring them into the church and that way we can expand mm. because now we're like you mentioned the seven mountains or society, we can be influential Oops. in these places yeah. and use those mm. and use those places and use those areas to draw men into the church. So that just that that's just my, that's mm. just my comment on it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So thank you for sharing that. Mm, and in fact, we are going to talk about uh, some of these things uh, in the uh, you know maybe in the next class. Right, so it's part of the church growth principles. So we will discuss that, and I've quickly put um, a link here uh, in our chat. This is what I was talking about. It'll be good between now and the next class if you can have a look at it. The video quality is not that great, but uh, at least you will get to hear the message uh, from Dr. Cho's address in a church growth seminar. Okay, and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. So, any any further comments? Uh, is Kennedy back with us? Kennedy, uh, do you want to try asking a question now? Am I audible? Oh, yes, perfect. Am I audible? Perfectly. Yes, <laughs> yes, Kennedy. You are, okay, you are. Yeah. yeah. My, big, my big concern was most 
local churches don't talk about the supernatural. They are more focused on uh, enlightenment. enlightenment. They enlighten through more than talking about the supernatural. That's what we're asking. Is modernity affecting the gospel mm. in the local churches? So that's what you meant. Yeah. The place that what you meant. Yeah. They are more modern, I say. They lose the the, the core. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, Kennedy, a, a very uh, relevant question. So what Kennedy is saying is um, uh, in the attempt to be relevant, uh, people preach, teach, but they don't demonstrate the power of the gospel. Uh, and, you know, the, uh, this is this is also considered like the modern gospel where there's more of just the teaching aspect, but not the uh, supernatural a part of God. Uh, and that's true. That's true. And we must uh, be, you know, we must be careful not to get into that because obviously we know that that's not how Jesus ministered the kingdom. So there are three aspects, preaching, teaching, and demonstrating the power of the kingdom. So that's the biblical way. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, thank Harrison. You. Thank you. Okay, Kennedy, yeah, okay. Thank you, Kennedy. Uh, yes, Harrison, uh, you have a question? We can have quickly because I think the time is up. Okay. Um, it's just um, some of the few things you know, I've observed in ministry here in Africa. And um, it's mm -hmm. it's more like, you know, we tend to focus on the building more than the people. Mm -hmm. yeah, we tend to focus on... Um, infrastructures you know we tend to inf we tend to focus on um the material things you know than the people in those in that material things you know at the end of the day mm -hmm. it's more like you know you're not you know you, you you do what you do by the end of the day you're not seeing the result of what you're doing and when you look at it it's, mm -hmm. it's you you notice that you've channeled your energy in in pouring out everything that you have on a building and the people. So it is very good, you know, that we we understand mm -hmm. you know, what um, ministry is. We understand what it means, you know, to to run a local church, you know, because as they come in, you know, I do say that, you know, the um, the church also is like a hospital. You know, a lot of people will come in. Some are broken, some are wounded, and so many other things. And how do you address them? How do you address those issues? We need to we need to put up you know activities you know that will help them come out you know from that trial and um, challenges you know they face. And when we are not seeing ourselves you know doing this thing, then it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, sure. Thank you, thank you, Harrison, for sharing your insights. Uh, and with that, I think we will wrap up the class. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, okay, everyone, thank you so much. I know you have another class to uh, attend. So please feel free to log out. Uh, God bless you. And I'll uh, we'll meet again next week. Okay, so take care. God bless. Bye. Bye for now. Bye, Ma. God bless you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. God bless you too.